The following is a presentation of ABC's Wide World of Sports, home of the World and U.S. Figure Skating Championships. The Olympic season begins today with the first stop of the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating. Michelle Kwan opens up a solitary search for Olympic gold with a run at an unprecedented sixth Skate America title. Fellow American Sarah Hughes has earned her place on the international stage. Can she now replace Kwan at the top? And young Sasha Cohen is back from injury, eager to regain momentum and make skating history in the process. In pairs, Jamie Sale and David Peltier have come to Colorado Springs as the reigning world champions. Today, the passionate Canadians look to win this event for the third consecutive year. The competitive season gets underway with Smart One Skate America next. drive from Denver we welcome you to Colorado Springs in the shadow of Cheyenne Mountain right there not far from Pikes Peak the mountain that inspired the words to America the beautiful and we bring you inside the world arena for the season's first official international event smart ones skate America along with Peggy Fleming Dick Button and Susie Wynn I'm Terry Gannon today the pairs and the ladies skate for gold with the pairs on the ice first and Take a look at the leaders after the short program. Jamie Sale, she and her partner David Peltier, the reigning world champions from Canada. But they're being pressed right now by the American champions. No surprise that Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman are in second place, but they have skated awfully well to get there. Now look at your standings. After the short program, the Canadians, then the Americans, followed by the Russians, two American teams, the Hartzels and Handy and Hunt in sixth and seventh place. Now, as we said, this kicks off the Grand Prix of figure skating, a series of six high-profile competitions over the next six weeks all across the globe. Skaters can compete up to three times in the series. Two of those appearances count in the standings. Then the top six in each discipline advance to the Grand Prix final in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. We'll have prime time coverage of that beginning on December 15th. So we're set to go here with the pairs free skate. Gold medal about to be decided and on the ice first from the U.S., Danielle and Steve Hartzell in sixth place after the short program. The music from the motion picture Broken Arrow. They've had a whole series of injuries and difficulties over the past years following their national championship win in 1999. They're a very powerful couple, opening with a split triple twist. They have good speed through this program. This throw triple loop. Look at the power in that. I mean, that was a strong one. She zipped through that and landed in the best of solid edges. This is a very good beginning for them. And now going for the side-by-side -side triple toe, double toe. You could see the turnover on his leg as that happened. The foot just turned over way onto the side. It's like using a pole ball and having it lean to the side when you thrust it into the ground. That's a bad position on the layback. Danielle and Steve, the brother-sister team from Westland, Michigan. Been together on the ice since 87. You mentioned the national championship in 99. They followed that up with a top 10 finish at the world championships. But then the broken kneecap suffered by Danielle. They were out for much of that next year. Last year at the national championships in practice. Remember, Steve hit his head on the ice. Was carried off. 
taken to a hospital, received stitches. They did compete, but only able to capture the bronze medal. But they came out and won the short program after that accident. Mm -hmm. They were just an amazing story. By the way, this free skate, four and a half minutes long, which can be an eternity at this altitude. We're better than 6,000 feet up. And now again, these side-by-side -side triple toe loops, which they only did doubles. did a double or a single and he did a double the heart attack lift. It's a backward press lift. Meaning that she did not lift herself off the ice. He pressed her into the air. Back inside, death spiral. One of their best performances. No, but you know, there was nice strength and nice speed and good security with it, even though there were some major, major mistakes. But there was quality in the uh, in this in some of the skating. Good reception from this audience here in the World Arena for the team that won the Junior World Title back in 1997 and the U.S. National Championship in '99. Danielle and Steve Hartzell. And the throw triple loop here, this back outside edge takeoff, nice lift, good landing, very strong. And here are their side by side triple toes, double toe combination. And she goes up into this takeoff, a little off in the timing. She does a double and he does the triple, but then falls. And then she continues on to do the double toe. And this is their heart attack lift, this back press lift. It's a very unusual position. A little dangerous because they, he could catch an edge and that could be a disaster. There's a look at the panel of judges. Often there are nine, but here there are seven. Dick, what about the requirements in the free skate? Well, the requirements are less specific than in the short program, but they do include one or two pair spins, one or two side-by-side -side jumps, one or two death spirals, and, of course, as always, musical expression. Alongside the choreographer, Alan Schramm, Two sets of marks, as always. The first for technical merit here in the free skate. 5.1 up to 5.3. And they're very evenly spaced. I mean, there's not much division among the judges there. Second set is for presentation. 5.0 to 5.2. Again, And that's exactly the same, and perhaps even a little less. Their presentation is does not have much lightness about it. It needs to, you know, pick up the delicacy and the... Uh, Plate that skating is all about. Up next, Jamie Sallet, David Peltier, the reigning world champions, Grand Prix final champs, looking to win for the third straight year here. But first, Peter Carruthers demonstrates one of the ice moves in pair skating. Well, you could say lifting an 80-pound barbell is not that big of a deal, but when you're doing it on a pair of skates where the blades 
are less than a quarter of an inch wide, well, it becomes a little bit more complicated. And that is why the man's footwork during a lift in pair skating is very important. Here are US champions Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman. The key to a successful lift here is the footwork. John cannot be too far back on his skates or too far forward. He has to be perfectly balanced in order to ensure safety throughout this lift. So the next time you see a lady floating through the air in a beautiful position during a lift in pair skating, remember the balance of the lift depends on the man's footwork below. Back here in Colorado Springs, which is not only a gorgeous part of the country, but also home to one of the most famous skating clubs, really in the history of this sport, the Broadmoor. In the early part of this century, they took the old polo field, made it into the Ice Palace, and it hosted many world championships, U.S. championships, and it was also the mecca for many of the legendary names of this sport, including our own Peggy Fleming, who trained here just months before her first world championship. And this guy here, do you recognize him? <laughs> Without question, the most celebrated construction worker in the history of this sport, Mr. Dick Button, a two-time Olympic gold medalist. What was all that about? Well, demonstrating the hospitality of this, uh, of this place, when they heard that I wanted to work outdoors or be outdoors during the day to counterbalance the indoor aspect of skating, they arranged for me to work on the road gang. And at 5.30 in the morning, I would get on the truck with all the guys, and we'd go up in the mountains and work on the roads. But the hospitality came in when at nighttime I came down, they gave me the bridal suite to stay in. <laughs> it was what made me really understand what the word salad days meant. So road warrior during the day, bridal suite, at, those please, were full days please, back then. Please, let's you. not get into this. Great memories <laughs> for you. How about you, Peggy? I know you've got some great memories of this place. Well, my most dominant memories of this place is my Italian coach, Carlo Fossi, and how he really pulled my career together here. And also the generosity of the Broadmoor and Thayer Tut, who was the driving force behind this hotel. I had just moved here six months earlier, and then I won my first world championship. But then three weeks later, my father died of a heart attack, leaving my mother with four girls, mm. my expensive career, and no income coming in. And without uh, that support, my career might have ended at that moment. But I am forever grateful to this mm. place. Thank goodness. It's very special. Back to the present right now. A little bit later, the ladies will take the ice for their free skate. The big story in figure skating this week, maybe in sports, Michelle Kwan parting ways with her longtime coach, Frank Carroll. It's been one of the most successful teams in the history of this sport. Now it's over, at least for the moment. What do you think? Well, I am, I'm kind of fearful for yeah. Michelle that she's made the right decision only three months before the Olympic Games, disrupting that wonderful support team that she is, has had for so yeah. many years and has been so successful. But I think Michelle's mind is probably her most powerful tool. And I think if any athlete can pull it together under this circumstance, I think she's the one. And she looked wonderful in the short program. So far, she looks really confident she really and, and together. She's the leader after the short program going into the free skate. Dick, what are your thoughts? about the change well number one I'm sorry that she won't have somebody to bounce off ideas with like she has in the past but I did notice one wonderful thing we've got to remember that she's 21 and her needs and her personality are changing and yesterday she seemed unhappy during the day but when she got out on the ice in the short program she skated with joy and abandon and a beauty and even though she popped one jump it was just lovely to see maybe it was acting but isn't that what skating and life sometimes is all about I wish them both the best They'll take the ice in a little bit for their free skate. And don't forget, this is only the first of six events in the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating. The next event north of the border will be in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for Skate Canada. Among others, Michelle Kwan will be there taking on Arena Sleuth Sky. That comes your way November 11th. Meanwhile, back inside the World Arena, Smart One Skate America continues. The pair's free skate, Jamie Saleh, David Peltier set to go. They may be the reigning world champions, but they are in no way satisfied with their place in the skating world. Oh, Having been together only since 98, Jamie Saleh and David Peltier from opposite ends of Canada won four of their five major competitions last season leading up to the world championships. We like to perform, and I think we thrive on stepping on the ice, the heat of the moment, and, you know, taking our position. It's like, hey, watch me. And watch with great anticipation the hometown crowd did at the Worlds in Vancouver in March as Jamie and David took the ice. Every element we were doing, the crowd was going louder and louder, and it's pretty hard to keep the focus. 
remember in our last spin in the program, I just kept saying to him, we did it, we did it, and he said, you know, keep your focus to the very end, and then I just lost at the very end. With a nearly flawless performance, they upset the favored Russian pair by a narrow margin to win the gold. And the strains of O Canada overwhelmed the ice rink as Jamie and David stood proudly on the podium. Recently, Jamie and David left their training site in Montreal, Quebec for Edmonton in Western Canada, close to Jamie's hometown in Alberta. They begin a new season without their coach, Richard Gauthier, who guided them from obscurity to a world title in two seasons. Their decision to move in an Olympic year and change to coach Jan Olmark signals a hunger to get even better. Every year is the same goal. You want to be the best. You want to be the best as you can be. You want to be better than last year. So as long as this is not going to change, it doesn't matter what title you put in the book and you put in the closet. If you still have this in you, that fire that burns inside, that tells you, that pushes you, then you're always going to be hungry for something, always. Here to represent Canada, here are Jamie Saleh and David Paltier. Their rise has been so quick. And the fire still burns for Jamie Saleh, David Peltier. Here they are skating for gold in the first official event of the season. The music piano concerto number two, Rachmaninoff. And this number is a departure from the programs that they've done in the past that have had a storyline. This year they are creating a mood with this program. side triple jumps. These are their triple toe loops. The unison is very good. Not she singled hers. Very nice, followed by double toe loops. short program was a debut program as well. They received first place ordinals from all of the judges. This has been a terrific event for them the last couple of seasons. Beautiful entrance into that forward death spiral. Very unusual. We've seen so many great death spirals over the past years going way back to the Protopopovs in the 1960s. of moves in that lift. Very smooth, very confident. Upset Berezhnaya and Seeker and Lita. It was really their coming out party as a team, and then defended their title last year, beating Shenan Zhao of China. And this is a wonderful move, this pair spin, and the transition of him twirling her around and stopping and continuing the pair spin. Very inventive.
exquisite position in that spiral. Well, they are so polished, so finished off in every move that they make. Give it so much feeling. Very difficult ending position. Well, first time you've seen this program. What do you think, Peggy? I think it's very nice. It doesn't have the emotion of like the love story numbers that they've done in the past and some of the ones that had a storyline. But this was very nice, very pleasant, very calm, confident number. Well, for me, it had a lovely, uh, it had a lovely quality and a lovely romance to it. It was a much more subtle romance, and I, I must say, I liked it. But maybe I'm also a, 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 a sucker for Rachmaninoff. <laughs> And it will grow throughout the season. But the, the one mistake in there, a bit of a door opening for uh, Ina and Zimmerman, what? will be the last to skate here in the free skate. Here is their opening move, this throw triple loop, the back outside edge takeoff. She gets nice height, very solid, a little leaning forward on the landing, but a lot of confidence going into that. And the side-by-side -side triple tulips, which they had trouble with, it was a double that she did, not a triple. He did the triple. And but that was look at this triple twist that they do later on in the program. Watch the height that she gets. The toe pick right here, the split, and look at where she is. I mean, that's really a dramatic, a dramatic move. David Paltier for technical merit. The coaching change this year to Jan Ulmark from Richard Gauthier, who have led them to a world title in just two years. Dramatic change in an Olympic season. First set of marks for technical merit, five sevens, five eights. Presentation. And I, th I think these marks coming up for the presentation have a great deal to do with the choreography of the program. Lori Nickel is a very talented, uh, a talented lady. Five eights, one five point nine from the French judge. No doubt about it. All first place ordinals from the judges here. Jamie Sale, David Peltier into the lead. Up next, Tatiana Topmianina and Maxime Marinin, the European silver medalist, two medals in the Grand Prix last year. They now live in Chicago. But first, Dick Button takes a look at the art of pair spins. Next. The rule book of figure skating states that in a pair spin, skaters grasp each other and spin together. In this combination pair spin, both skaters start in the camel spin position. Then the man changes to a back spin as the woman remains in a camel. In the combination pair spin, skaters change both their position and their spinning foot. A reminder tonight, the toys are back in town in the greatest buddy movie ever. Tom Hanks and Tim Allen together in Toy Story tonight at 7, 6 Central, right here on ABC. Sale Peltier have the lead as the pairs are skating for the gold medal, but here's the team who's in third place after the short program, Tatiana Topmianina and Maxime Marinin from Russia. They are skating to West Side Story, and I think this number really suits them so well. It's their last year's program. Although they train in Chicago, their coach is Oleg Vasiliev, the 1984 Olympic pair champion. Svetlana, the choreographer rather, Svetlana Korol. The side-by-side -side triple Salkow is a very different side-by-side -side jump opposed to some of the other skaters who are doing the, the uh, triple toe. More difficult triple. that finished fifth in the world last year, which was really impressive when you think about all the problems they had searching for coaches. They went through about three or four that they had possibilities with, finally ended up with Oleg Vasiliev and moved to Chicago, as Dick said, and now skating pretty well. Nice 
throw triple uh, loop. have talked about it often. Many times Russian skaters don't go through their entire programs in practice, and now at this altitude, you get about three minutes into a program, it might be the area where fatigue starts to set in. I don't know why they don't do that, because that is so important to have your endurance and it, just make this all second nature. And when you get nervous, your muscle memory takes over. And they it's really hard to watch them all they, week because the, they don't go through it. They don't do it because that's the way the Russians have trained. They didn't want to show it to the judges. It's been a habit of the Russians ever since the beginning of the Russian period of skating, and they feel that that's the important element. That's why they do it. Doesn't seem to make much sense, though, does it? Yes, it, yes, it does. It, they're not, because the short elements of, of practice give you energy through each element, and they know they're being judged by the judges before, during the, the practice sessions. That's their attitude, that's their approach, and they've been pretty spectacular in a lot of the events in skating over sure. the past years. They have so dominated this for so many years. better finish but I do like them I think there's a lot of potential in this couple they seem very much out of breath they're very nice but I'll tell you there was very little West Side Story in that performance it was more like a Russian version of it I keep thinking of Larry Kurt and Carol La Carol Lawrence and all the others who in the early days of, of West Side Story they're just it's really a Russian feel to this not a not a West Side of New York feel but Mianina and Marinin of Russia in third place after the short program. Now in this throw triple loop, watch the way he lifts her off that back outside edge. She has a good straight line, a good straight position. The back could have been held a little straighter on the landing, but really overall that was a wonderful combination. And in these side-by-side -side triple toe loops, double toe loop combination, there's the toe pick, the double jump, the triple jumps, and the double jumps. And that really is commendably good. The first of two sets of marks now, technical merit marks, mid fives, 5.4 up to 5.7, and those are very good marks, very solid marks. And they're marks for presentation. And now, and second set for presentation, Dick, 
the high mark and 5-4 once again same range yes but uh, it wasn't quite the same range and uh, there were a couple of marks that were lower and a couple not quite so high and I think that's because it, they felt that it was not a solid emotional performance of choreography into second place on the ice next, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, the U.S. gold medalist the past two years, trying to stand on the podium at this event for the first time. They'll have to overcome injury to do it right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Speed Pass. Today's way to pay. It's free from mobile. The ladies will take the ice for their free skate in a little bit. In the short program, all eyes were on Michelle Kwan as she got ready for her first competition in about a decade without Frank Carroll, her coach. The early triple-double combination, very solid. But then a problem with her triple flip. Other than that, though, she was very relaxed, very confident. She is the leader heading into the free skate. Fellow American Sarah Hughes, the world bronze medalist, unveiled a program to Ave Maria, her new short program. She had a problem with her jump combination. But other than that, very solid. And Sarah Hughes resides in second place right behind Michelle. Sasha Cohen is back after the back injury. She plans a quad into free skate, but in the short program, some problems with her jump combination. She is currently in fourth. Down to the final pair here in the free skate as they settle the gold medal, and they are the two-time and reigning U.S. champions. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman in second place after the short program and more dedicated than ever in this Olympic season. We went to Worlds thinking we're ready and we didn't perform as well as we wanted to. So that was a little setback, but it made us much more hungry for this year. So we just came home after Worlds and decided that we were going to give up our lives for a year, and just really train and see what we can do. And hopefully we'll have good days when we have to perform and that's the best we can hope for. Well, their performance in the short program here in Colorado Springs would suggest that they are more focused than ever. They were terrific with that short program and now well positioned in second with a chance to win the gold, but they'll have to be very, very good. Kyoko Ina, John Zimmerman. The music, a theme of Paganini by Andrew Lloyd Webber. This was their last year's number. They're very comfortable with it. Triple toes. They had a little trouble with that landing. Couldn't check out of that. Nice side by side double axles. dislocated her right shoulder in late summer. We're off the ice. They couldn't go to the Goodwill Games because of that.
about to do is called the candle lift. And watch how he lifts her up in this position. And he does a spread eagle. Very difficult. And turns forward for this other layout position and flips down. Very inventive. This number, they didn't skate at their best. They had a few shaky moments, but it still is a very solid, wonderful program. Got potential. And they were so good in the short program to come back. They did have a few mistakes, but uh, some positives, very positive for Ina and Zimmerman. Not much room at the top, though, in terms of Sally and Peltier. I'm That's not right. sure they can make a run at the Canadian World Champions, but uh, we shall see. Back with the marks for the two-time U.S. champs, Ina and Zimmerman, in a moment. here at Colorado Springs. Don't forget our coverage continues next Sunday. Timothy Gable skating for gold with the men and also we'll have the free dance. Our coverage begins at 1230 Eastern, 3 Pacific right here on ABC Sports. Back in the kiss and cry area now with Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman and Igor Moskvin, the husband of Tamara Moskvina. She's been spending a lot of time in Russia lately, so he has principally been coaching them. And here was one of the flaws they had in the program at the side-by-side -side triple toe lips. Watch that shaky landing that he had on that, a little out of control. And again, here on the side-by-side -side double axles, watch them go up. They had nice unison going on this takeoff, but he touches his hand down right there on the landing. And watch this candle lift. It is spectacular, very original. Watch him lift her up over his head and balance her there and then going into the spread eagle position as he's carrying her and then stepping forward then she changes position and flips over to a carry lift and flips out beautiful so now the marks first set in the five 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 six range they certainly are consistent they only won 5.6. That's from the French judge. And now the presentation marks. And they too are consistent. Right across the board, five sixes and five sevens. And you look at the placements from the judges, the third place ordinals in the middle there, three of them, but four second places. And Ina and Zimmerman able to finish in second and capture the silver medal here in Colorado Springs. They were fourth last year, and now they'll stand on the podium with a silver medal. But it's Jamie Salet, David Peltier with a reason to high five. They're the first Paris team ever to win three consecutive Skate America titles. And with the gold medal, they pick up 12 Grand Prix points. Remember, the top six in each discipline points-wise at the end of the series move on to the Grand Prix final. Ina Zimmerman, nine points with the silver medal. Topmianana Marinin, seven points with the bronze. The Hartzels from the U.S. finish fifth. Right now, let's check in with Susie Wynn. 
Congratulations, Kyoko and John. You told us earlier that you're rededicating yourself to skating and that everything else comes second. It seems as though that's really worked out well for you. It has. It really has. I, right before we got on, I said to John, we're ready. Whatever happens, happens. If something goes wrong, it's just bad luck, but we need to continue. Now, with your shoulder injury, how hard has it been to re-choreograph things and get ready for the free program? Well, uh, Kyoko's really the one who controls that because it's her shoulder. She tells us whether she can do certain things or not, you know, and since we don't feel it, she feels it, uh, we need to listen to her and, uh, you know, go from there. Well, we wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing you throughout the series. Thanks Congratulations. So Thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, still to come here in Colorado Springs today, the ladies take the ice to skate for the gold medal, including Michelle Kwan, the current leader. Such confidence. What a performance. Wow, she did seven triple jumps in this program. The heart of a champion. Beautiful moment for her. Just beautiful. From the smallest beginnings to the biggest events, the United States Figure Skating Association is there for you. We teach America to skate. United States Figure Skating, building America's champions. It's the deepest, most talented team in the world. Today, the U.S. ladies get their Olympic season underway. Can Michelle Kwan remain alone at the top by winning a sixth Skate America title? Or will Sarah Hughes, who was so close last year, capture gold this time around? And then there's Sasha Cohen back on the scene and planning an historic performance. They're looking for an American sweep of the podium as Smart One Skate America continues next on ABC Sports. Inside the World Arena, the fans getting ready to watch the ladies skate for gold here at the first event of the Grand Prix of Figure Skating, Smart Ones Skate America. Hi again, everybody. Terry Gannon back with Peggy Fleming and Dick Button. At the moment, after the short program, three of the four spots at the top of the standings occupied by Americans. And let's analyze those, Dick, starting with Michelle Kwan. Well, you know, on any scale I use, Michelle Kwan's strengths will certainly outweigh her weaknesses. She has maturity, she has command of the ice, she has the ability to ride through adversity. And it's still to be determined how she'll survive the separation with Frank Carroll. And remember, too, also how will it affect her, the change of choreographers. Now, finally, remember that being the defending champion is much, much harder than being the challenger. What about those challengers, though, Peggy, starting with Sasha Cohen? Well, you know, Sasha is returning from a back injury that kept her off of the ice most of last season, and she definitely wants to be noticed here. Her plan is to be the first lady in history to land a quadruple jump in competition. She landed several of these in practice all week, and she made it look rather easy. But her real strength here is her spectacular style. And Sarah Hughes, she's 16 years old. She has already been to three world championships and won a bronze medal. Her strength is that fierce competitiveness that she has. She is just beginning to find her style, which is the only weakness that I can name. Her maturity on the ice comes in flashes, and some of those flashes are brilliant. All right, having said all of that, who do you like? Who's your well, pick? Well, I'm going to have to go with Michelle Kwan. I think, you know, her experience and her ability to focus is still her most powerful tool. I would have to uh, agree with you there. How about you, Dick? Well, I <laughs> loathe being asked to predict who is going to win, but I've got to tell you, since you've got me in chains here, yeah. un un unless I do, that it'll have to be Michelle Kwan, and that's because she has maturity. She has the willingness to take risks, and because when she skates well and rises from the ashes, so to speak, the joy of skating makes us glow. Something is wrong here. All three of us agree on who's going to win this thing. Well, Michelle Kwan does have the lead heading into the free skate. Sarah Hughes right behind her. Victoria Volchkova of Russia could break up the American sweep of the podium. Sasha Cohen right now is in fourth place. And up first here in the free skate, Shizuka Arakawa representing Japan, the current Japanese silver medalist. She's in sixth place after the short program. Skating from the opera Turandot, Puccini, the same music used by her compatriot from Japan. That's team spirit, skating to the same music. But she has a real good feeling for this music and a wonderful flow over the ice, but she's rather reserved in her presentation.
steps, double toe. Triple combination, triple sow cow, triple loop. Oh, she managed to pull that off. She had a real wrap around on her free leg for the landing. Very determined. years of age from Tokyo. Silver medal at the Japanese Championships this year, but she won that title twice, back in 98, 99. Triple flip, struggled on that landing. Triple loop at the end of this program, four minutes long, up at 6,000 feet here in Colorado Springs. It's a real test to your endurance. She has landed seven clean triples in this program. Beautifully done. Listen to this crowd right now, too. Great ovation from this crowd in Colorado Springs. Shizuka Arakawa, the 19-year-old from Tokyo, who was in sixth place Shizuka. after the short program and looking to move up. Shizuka. Now, look at the strength and the good stretch and the height and all of the athleticism she gets in that triple salkow, triple loop jump. A slight turn on the edge, if you looked very carefully, you'd see the landing wasn't exactly clean, but it was a beauty, despite that good cross legs and stepping right up into a triple. And there you can see she cheats on the end of it. But nevertheless, spectacular. And there's a look at the judges working this competition. Many times there are nine. There are seven here in Colorado Springs. What about the requirements in the free skate, Peggy? Well, here are some of the requirements. There are no deductions for these, only if they fall or something. There's a, a jump combination that they have to do. They have to do four different kinds of spins, a spiral sequence, and, of course, musical interpretation is very important. Fatigue never became a factor, even at this altitude with that wow, program. Wow, look at those marks there, will you? Technical merit, the first set, 5.3 to 5.6. Those are brilliant marks and really wonderful for her as a young upcoming skater. And look at the presentation marks, Dick, 5.2 up to 5.6. Great performance from Shizuka Arakawa. 
When we come back, Sasha Cohen takes the ice. Returning after a season of injury, will she land the quad? The U.S. silver medalist from the year 2000 skates. But first, Peggy takes a look at a layback spin and what it should look like. You know, a lot of people have asked me after the 68 Olympics of how I did my layback spin. And it's, it's a really difficult spin because you're in this layback position. You're actually looking at the ceiling as you're spinning around. And it's a really strange feeling, but you do get used to it. And Sarah Hughes here has one of the classic layback spins. And she does it by squaring off her hips and arching straight back and getting this wonderful line. She doesn't move from side to side. Now, Sarah, do you think you could show us one? It's easy enough to do a layback with your free leg down low as Sarah's demonstrating. But watch Sarah as she has a beautiful turned out position. And turned out means that the free leg and foot must be as flat and parallel to the ice as possible. Sarah, that was absolutely beautiful. You know, it takes years and years of practice to perfect a spin like this. And I think you've got it. <laughs> ABC Sports coverage of the Smart One Skate America continues. Back in Colorado Springs, a reminder, next Sunday, the Grand Prix of Figure Skating continues with the Men's and Ice Dance Championships here at Smart One Skate America. Reigning national champion Timothy Gable heads the field. That's next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific. Meanwhile, on the ice, ready to go right now, Sasha Cohen. Two years ago, she became the next great star on the horizon in the U.S. Now, she's determined to regain that momentum. Burning onto the scene like a comet, Sasha Cohen set the skating community on fire at the 2000 Nationals by winning the short program. My greatest skating memory so far is when I won Nationals, met the short program and I was sitting in the kiss and cry and I saw my, my name go first place after Michelle had skated. And it was just like, oh my gosh, wow. Sasha finished second overall that year. Everyone eagerly anticipated her next move at the 2001 Nationals, but her ride to stardom was derailed by a nagging injury that proved to be a stress fracture of a vertebra in her lower back. Her bid for gold was put on hold. It wasn't really like I broke my back, I better stop right now but it was something that it was a little problem and I didn't really pay attention to it where I should have, but it got worse and worse. This August, Sasha began her comeback bid at the Goodwill Games. With a strong performance, she proved to everyone that the injury hasn't affected her focus. Skating well feels really good and it's rewarding. I know that I have very high expectations of myself, so if I can satisfy myself, then I think I'm set. She has come back strong and now not only trying to win a medal here, but also perhaps trying to make history. Perhaps the first woman ever to complete a quad jump in competition. She'll be trying to do that. And she's chosen the music Carmen. And we've seen great Carmens in the past, particularly in 1998. What a choice this will be. Look at that stretch, the pointed leg, the turned out foot. 1988. At the Olympics, the Battle of the Carmens, Katarina Vitt, Debbie Thomas. Well, she's taking command of the ice with those beautiful moves she did. Those spirals are spectacular. Now her opening jump is a triple lutz, double toe. Actually, this is probably going to be the quad. This is her takeoff. Here she goes, right at inside edge. Oh, 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 what a wild open. Oh. oh, my gosh. That was a complete blow it out, pop it out move. It was scheduled to be her third move in her program. She landed some in the practice, in the warm-up here. You know, the problem is that she probably changed her mind mm -hmm. and switched it with this. And that's one of the difficult things of doing in any skater is changing your mind as the choreography takes place. Right, and she replaced that with the triple lutz. She tried that and failed. and it bl it's just blown her right off the track. Maybe that's one of the great problems that this young lady has demonstrated in the past, and we hope that she can overcome. There was again an attempt, you see. It's just off-setter, and um, 
you've got to rise above that if you're going to be a champion. But talk about exquisite. That layback is worth any quadruple move. Absolutely perfect positions. favorite comment from John Nix was, I'm a conservative Englishman. I don't like gambling, but I'm always outvoted. I'm sure he told her not to do that. And this is called the Sasha spiral that she just did, that extension and turning to a forward edge is absolutely beautiful. just turned 17 on Friday, and there have been some who questioned the decision even to put the quad in the program at this point. Well, I think John Nix was very clear in wanting her to do two clean programs because she's coming into this performance in fourth place, and he wants her at least to be on the gold medal, uh, on, the, on the medal stand. Now there's a question about this. this age he's already had a serious back injury but the wear and tear of practicing something like the quad in, on an everyday basis well it's tough i mean for her to be doing that quad in the practice in some ways it could be good for her because doing a triple would seem easy if she can be practicing the quad but it worked in the reverse for her here disappointing effort for sasha cohen And here is a look at that quad attempt that she did, this quad sow cow, that inside edge, and she just opened out on that and kind of freaked. And here is a closer look at that edge. Here she takes off on that back inside edge, and her legs just spread apart. She gave up. That's too bad, because she was doing so well in the warm-up. And here is a look at this triple toe that she did. She's leaning in the air. Her legs are crossed. And she just could not pull that landing out. Marks for Shasha Cohen for technical merit. There's John Nix alongside, doing some teaching right now, no doubt. First set of marks now, 4.6 up to 5.1. and 5.1. Well, it was a very tough performance for her, a rather uh, a disaster. But she will learn from this experience. And the second set. For presentation, 5.1 up to 5.4. When we come back, Michelle Kwan, who won her fourth world title last season, trying to win this event for the sixth time, but how will she react without Frank Carroll? That's the question when she takes the ice next. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Speed Pass. Today's way to pay. It's free from mobile. Over the past number of years, one of the most intense rivalries in figure skating has been that of Michelle Kwan and Arena Slutskaya. Kwan won the gold at last year's World, Slutskaya the silver. So far this season, though, Slutskaya has gotten the better end of the deal. She's 2-0 against Michelle, including a win at the Goodwill Games, and they will meet head-to-head -head two weeks from now right here on ABC Sports, north of the border at Skate Canada. Should be a great matchup. 
Meanwhile, the moment that many in this crowd came to see, Michelle Kwan about to step on onto the ice. Earlier this week, she announced that she was separating from her longtime coach and mentor, Frank Carroll. Many are asking the question now, why? If you really think about it, every skater is alone on the ice. You're out there alone, and you have to be strong from within. That's what I'm trying to do. This decision was all mine. It was a complete surprise to me, and uh, I, I really don't understand it. I, I think that she really um, is going through a rough time right now. So all right. You, know, you, know, you can't be perfect all the time. You can't be that hard on yourself. Oh, no. He was her calming influence, her coach. For 10 years, the voice of reason. Side by side, they celebrated five national titles and four world crowns. Now, at the most critical juncture of her career with the Olympics nearing, Michelle Kwan has decided to go it alone. This wasn't an easy decision for me. I've been thinking about it for several months, and um, I wish I could say there was a huge fight between us, and it just went pow, pow, and we broke up, but it wasn't like that. It's difficult to explain this to people because there's nothing wrong between us. You know, we care about each other deeply. We always will. All I can tell you is that she came to me and said that she needed to take responsibility for her skating herself and to not depend on anyone, but to be strong enough to go out there and win on her own. The two people in Michelle Kwan's career who love her more than anyone else, Lori Nickel, Frank Carroll. And in the last, what, eight or nine months, She's fired them both. She's pushing them away. Why is she doing that? Now, as she undertakes this unprecedented step to coach herself, the question looms, how will this decision affect her quest for Olympic gold? I know it's about four months before the Olympics. It's a big decision. Um, but if, even if it's four days before the Olympics, if it can help me skate better, um, then I've got to do it. She says, sometimes I have to look for motivation. This, this is not an idle statement. You know, she's saying something here, and she's saying that it's a little tough sometimes to dig down deep and to find the reason to go to that ring. My major concerns for her are the Olympic Games, and I want her desperately to win the Olympic Games, and I want her to uh, get out there and skate the way she can. I just hope it works for her. There is one factor in Michelle's favor. She thrives on challenges. Like last year at Worlds, when most counted her out, she responded with her best. Of course, that was with Frank. It remains to be seen what she can do without him. I believe in myself, and I hope people out there believe in me. And I believe that this is the best for Michelle. Representing the United States, Michelle Kwan. Well, Michelle Kwan is always under plenty of scrutiny when she takes the ice, but maybe now more than ever after that risky decision, some would say, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. Some Bruins in the stands here to support her. UCLA student taking some time off of school right now to concentrate on this Olympic year. Here is Michelle Kwan. The choice of music, Scheherazade by Rimsky Korsakov. The program was choreographed by her new choreographer, Sarah Karahara. And she is opening with her triple-triple combination. Triple toe, triple toe. Triple double. Very low height on the first one in speed, and that caused the setback on the second part. Solid triple south cow.
spin. It's interesting, her win in the short program here was far from unanimous. The German judge put her in third, and the U.S. judge actually had Sarah Hughes in first, and Michelle in second. Hughes will be the last to skate here in the free skate. Now coming up, this triple flip that she opened up in the short program that caused her problems. The first and again, attempt again. at a double axle. It went to a single. And now here is this triple flip that she had problems in the short program. But not tonight. on the landing, the edge not quite as smooth as it could be. But it doesn't seem that the altitude is bothering her. She seems very strong at the end of this four-minute program. Final triple toe loop. Michelle Quanchi landed six clean triple jumps in this program. She seems very happy. There's her dad, Danny, who was ranked side throughout that entire performance. Well, it was not an A plus, but it was still an A minus program. The last time Michelle lost to anyone other than Arena Slutskaya at a major eligible competition, the 99 Worlds, two and a half years ago. There's Christy Yamaguchi in the stands, Olympic champion. And here is her triple-triple combination. She's going to have to make this tougher when she gets to the world and to the Olympics. There's the triple toe. Not a very good flowing edge out of it, and she did a double instead of a triple. And here is a look at the uh, double axle that ended up being a single. And now this was her triple loop that she had trouble on the landing. She goes up in the air, and her feet are crossed so dramatically, it was really hard for her to hold on to that landing, and she two-footed it. Well, that's Wendy Ensman, team leader from the United States Figure Skating Association, alongside. The first set now, 5.4 up to 5.8. Not her usual higher marks, but certainly acceptable, considering the number of minor little touches that were not quite so perfect now in her this marks performance. And normally, her presentation marks are higher, and those are at the low mark of 5.6. But all first place ordinals for Michelle Kwan. She has the lead for the moment. Well, there is an opportunity now for Sarah Hughes, who finished second to Michelle last year in this event. She'll skate last with a chance to win the gold. But up next, Victoria Volchkova, who came in second at the Russian Nationals last season. Throughout her career, she's won three medals in the Grand Prix, and she's next. In the rulebook, 
stroke of figure skating, the axle is the only jump to take off going forward. In this double axle, the skater takes off on a forward outside edge and then completes two and a half revolutions. The hardest triple jump is the triple axle. The skater completes three and a half revolutions in the air. The triple axle triple toe loop combination requires tremendous jump technique, including good approach, speed, tight rotation, and controlled landings. Along with Peggy Fleming and Dick Button, I'm Terry Gannon ringside here as the ladies' free skate continues. Michelle Kwan has the lead. Shizuka Arakawa from Japan in second and Sasha Cohen of the U.S. in third. But here's the skater that could be the wild card here, Victoria Volchkova, 19 years of age from St. Petersburg, Russia, and she is in third place after the short program. And she's skating to the music from the motion picture Gone with the Wind. And she has the best and highest jumps of anyone here. But she's very unfinished and very unpredictable. And she's opening her program with a triple-triple combination. Triple sow cow, triple loop, or triple toe. Here's the triple sow cow, back inside edge. Oops. Double sow cow. Just does a double. coming up this triple lutz she says this is her easiest jump but not tonight not sometimes, <laughs> not sometimes. oh god oh. well this is the unpredictable thing that i was telling you about at the very beginning but she's a very natural jumper beautiful spring and flow to her jumps Straight edge going in. You see how beautifully that was put together. I keep attributing it to the straight line going in. That wonderful pole vault stiff right behind it. Actually beautiful. Cow. I think she added that in because she missed it in the beginning. And there is that unpredictable quality again popping up. She has, however, captured three bronze medals at the European Championships and placed sixth at the World Championships the last two years. to her skating, but she just kind of throws some of these moves away. Such a shame, there's a lot of talent here. Just look on the ice. I said it once before, I'll say it again. She certainly reminds me of Anna Karenina. She's beautiful. In her final scratch spin. A little slow.
She's just going, oh my gosh, what have I just done? <laughs> Opportunity oh. that went by the wayside. But she did manage to do five clean triples. She may have opened up the door for Sasha Cohen to pull up onto a medal. Might be tough though. Victoria Volchkova, third place after the short program. Now this second move, uh, a combination, but watch this triple lutz. Right there, she does a double instead of a triple and leaves out the double toe that was to have been part of it. Not a good beginning of the program. But on this triple lutz jump, watch what happens here. She does a beautiful stretch up into the air and just beautiful with a double toe uh, combination right there. Nice straight legs, good spring. Uh, just a wonderful basic talent. 5.4, 5.4. Alongside her coach, Viktor Kudryavtsev, who she moved from St. Petersburg to Moscow to train with. First set, 5.3 to 5.5. Those are really not too bad. I mean, she did complete some nice triples once she finally did them. And now presentation 5.0 to 5.6. Pretty good placements from the judges here, too, and for Victoria Volchkova into second place ahead of Shizuka Arakawa. Down to the final skater, Sarah Hughes, the world bronze medalist, only 16 years old. She medaled in all of her events last year. She takes the ice after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Tomorrow night, it's Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. The Tennessee Titans take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And don't miss the annotated Dennis Miller each Tuesday morning online at ESPN.com. Keyword, Monday Night Football. Meanwhile, we're down to the final skater here in the ladies' free skate, Sarah Hughes, with a chance to win the gold medal. She has that on her mind, but for the past number of weeks, she has also had getting a strong start here to the season. Much on her mind. Being that Skate America is the first Grand Prix of the season and the first time I'll be showing everybody my programs, I really want to have a strong start and um, be on the podium there as well as I was last year. Last year was a great competition for me. Um, and I hope to show good, strong programs at the beginning of the season and have something to build upon. Representing the United States, Sarah Hughes. She was extremely close to winning the gold medal in this event last season. Some thought she should have won it. Now, it's in her hands. She can win gold. Michelle Kwan, the leader. Victoria Volchkova in second. Arakawa in third. It's a new program to the music of Daphne and Chloe from Ravel and an adagio from the Piano Concerto Number no. 2 by Rachmaninoff. And her coach, Robin Wagner, said that she choreographed this program to emphasize Sarah's power, fluidity, line, and longness. She creates a beautiful line on the ice. Combination. Triple sow cow, triple loop. Here's the triple sow cow. Triple loop. Good for her. Made that look very easy. Nice flowing edges out of those triples. taking every one of these jumps very carefully. She keeps her composure. This is that competitiveness that we were talking about earlier. Last season, she medaled at every major event which she entered. The three Grand Prix events, 
the Grand Prix Final, National, the World Championships. Right now, though, trying to win her first gold medal in a Grand Prix event. Now coming up, her second triple-triple combination. If she does this, triple toe, triple loop. She just elected to do the triple toe. Very nicely done. Beautiful extension in this flying camel. Great positions, good speed. Did she just win it? Oh, I, I don't I know if she won it or not, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past this house. Robin Wagner, her coach. She landed six clean triples, just the same as Michelle Kwan, so we'll have to but, see what they're gonna do. But the triples were cleaner, oh, and Michelle had little troubles on the landings. Technique Stand, not quite as good. Standing ovation here in the World Arena for Sarah Hughes. We'll come back and find out who just won the gold medal in a moment. Back at Smart One Skate America, Sarah Hughes with her coach, Robin Wagner, waiting to find out the judge's decision. Well, this is her triple-triple combination, and this is probably going to make or break her here at this competition, Will it, whether she'll win. Beautifully done. Nice edges in between that triple south out, triple loop. And watch this triple lutz. Look at the free leg. It swings very, very high, but she pulls that off and does her triple lutz double toe combination. And here she is doing her triple toe. She taps in nice and straight. Very nice extension on that landing. Well done. Hard to imagine a much better performance from Sarah Hughes with that new program. First set of marks now, 5.5 to 5.7. And those are very, very good and very solid. What can I tell you? Now the all-important presentation marks. Five, six to five, eight. And that is not enough. Sarah Hughes is gonna have to settle for the silver medal once again. Wow, that was close. <laughs> I mean, she skated so well, landing that triple-triple combination. That's what Michelle Kwan is gonna have to do when she gets to the Olympics and she gets up against Arena Slutskaya. This audience is not happy. Not happy at all in, in the house here. Two of the judges put her in first place, but five of the judges put Michelle Kwan ahead of her. Backstage, a celebratory hug from her dad, Danny Kwan. Michelle Kwan, a reason to smile. Another win here in this event, Skate America, and six gold medals now for Michelle Kwan, edging out Todd Eldridge, and Yeltsova, and Bushkov. Quite an accomplishment. So it's Michelle Kwan who wins an unprecedented sixth Skate America title. She picks up 12 Grand Prix points for the win. Second straight year that she's edged out Sarah Hughes, who picks up nine points 
Victoria Volchkova gets the bronze medal. Sasha Cohen ends up in fifth place. Take a look right now, Dick, at how the judges' ordinals broke down. Well, remember, the ordinals are the placement where they put the skater, not by how much or by how little. And in this case, five of the judges put Michelle Kwan in first place. That's a majority, and that controls it. It does not matter that two of those judges put Sarah Hughes in first place. And time now to take a look at our Smart Ones Smart Move Award replay from the gold medal performance of Michelle Kwan, the triple lux, double toe combination for the four-time world champion. Another win in this event, this time here at Colorado Springs. Satisfying victory. Let's go over and join Susie Wynn. Thank you, Terry. Congratulations, Michelle. Six triples and a new program. How do you rate your performance here at Skate America? I felt really solid tonight. I felt that um, I had a really good warm-up, I was ready, and I gave my dad a hug, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. Now, for Skate Canada next week, what will you be doing, how do you need to prepare, and what needs to happen there to keep you on top? Well, last week and this week was um, very hectic for me. It was very, it was very hard, and to get through this week was really important, and I feel that I'm improving each day. So by next week in Skate Canada, and with the altitude training up <laughs> here, um, I'll be ready. Well, we are joined by somebody very special, world and Olympic champion Christy Yamaguchi, and you have a special presentation to make. Yep, Michelle, on behalf of Smart Ones, I'd like to present a check in your name of $5,000 to the U.S. Figure Skating Association's Memorial Fund, and this will help uh, contribute to the up-and-coming skaters of America. So congratulations. Oh, thank you, Christy. Thank you both. It's great being with you. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, don't forget Michelle takes on Arena Slutskaya at Skate Canada. Well, Sarah Hughes didn't win, but she's got to be thrilled with the way things went out on the ice. She's made her way over to have a word with Susie. Great job, Sarah. Six clean triples, a wonderful program. This time last year, you came very close to beating Michelle Kwan. Again, we weren't able to edge her out, but the audience disagrees. What about you? I'm very happy with my performance. It's a great start to my season, and I hope just to keep improving like last year. I'm really happy. Congratulations, and we wish you all the best in the, in the series. Thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, so as we wrap things up, don't forget the Grand Prix of figure skating continues. We're with you again next Sunday from Colorado Springs. We'll have the men's and ice dance championships here at Smart Ones Skate America. Until then, for our producer, Kurt Gowdy Jr., our director, Doug Wilson, for Dick Button, Peggy Fleming, and Susie Wynn, I'm Terry Gannon. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.